this video is for all the workers of Tennessee. Because whether you work in a hospital or medical clinic, in construction, in a manufacturing facility, in the public sector, a school, an office, or a restaurant, you may very well be exposed to hazardous chemicals. We use chemicals every day. Some can hurt us by burning us or exploding or catching fire right now. Some can hurt us over time by causing cancer or damaging our body on the inside. You have the right to know about the hazards of the chemicals you work with. But do you want to know? Does it matter to you what's in the container you're using or in the air you're breathing? What do you think? If you become disabled or are killed as a result of exposure to chemicals, your employer may be able to replace your position, but your family and friends can never replace you. Someday, would you rather be here? Or here? Do you think it's important to know about the chemicals you're exposed to? So let's say that it is important and that it does matter and that we do want to protect ourselves. How do we do that? Hello, my name is Kim Mickles, and I want to talk with you about some things you can do to protect yourselves from the hazards of the chemicals you work with. Always remember this. If a chemical doesn't get on you or in you, it is not going to hurt you. Consider that the basic rule of chemical safety. We keep chemicals off us or out of us by using proper storage containers, personal protective equipment like gloves and respirators, ventilation, and so forth. When we talk about chemicals, please keep in mind that chemicals are not just in cans or barrels. They include chemicals that we produce when we work, like carbon monoxide from a propane fueled forklift or floor cleaner, or from a gasoline powered generator. For the workplace, OSHA, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, has established rules that your employer must follow. These rules are called the OSHA standards, and they are the law. The section of the standards we will be talking about today is called Hazard Communication, or HASCOM. OSHA's regulations spell out what employers must do to protect you from the hazards of the chemicals you use or may be exposed to. In Tennessee, we have a state OSHA program that enforces the OSHA standards. Our OSHA program is called TOSHA, Tennessee OSHA. One thing TOSHA compliance officers will check on is if you know about the chemicals you're exposed to and their hazards. TOSHA officers will ask you these questions and expect you to be able to answer them correctly. What is this training about? What hazardous chemicals are you exposed to? Where are those chemicals present? What are the short and long-term health effects of chemicals on the body? How can you detect if you're overexposed? How can you protect yourself? Do you know the location of your safety data sheets and the written hazard communication program? What information must be on the label on containers of hazardous chemicals? What do the pictograms and the new labels and the SDS mean? If you could not answer some or any of those questions, please know that when we are done with this training, you should be able to answer those questions correctly. The purpose of OSHA's HASCOM standard is to ensure that chemical hazards are classified and that information regarding those hazards is transmitted or communicated to you. Remember the name of this section? Hazard communication. This training, then, is about the hazards of the chemicals you're exposed to. One of the things employers must do to communicate this information about the hazards of the chemicals you work with is prepare a written hazard communication program. Do you know where your written HASCOM program is? You need to know in case you want more information on your program, like what kind of labels you use, who can you contact for more information, and so forth. Employers also need to ensure that the containers of the chemicals you use are labeled properly. We will look at this in more detail in a moment. Employers need to maintain a set of safety data sheets, or SDS. Older versions were called Material Safety Data Sheets, or MSDS. SDS and MSDS contain very important information about the chemical product. We will look at the 16-section SDS format in a moment. Do you know where your SDS are? And lastly, employers need to conduct effective training to teach you about the hazards of the chemicals you work with. In Tennessee, this training must be done annually, meaning within 365 days of the last training. Hazard communication has been around since 1985. You should have been trained by your employer each year that you were exposed to a hazardous chemical on the job. 
In 2012, OSHA and TOSHA made changes to the HASCOM standard. They did this to make our OSHA requirements more closely match labeling requirements from around the world. So no matter where your chemicals come from, the information should be usable to you. OSHA adopted a globally harmonized system, and we will take a closer look at that now. When we talk about label requirements, we're talking about labels on incoming containers of chemicals, items that are shipped into your facility or onto your site. You will see these labels on cans, bottles, totes, barrels, and so forth. And for the containers of chemicals you fill in the workplace, such as spray bottles and the chemicals you produce as a result of the process, like the carbon monoxide I mentioned earlier, or welding fumes. For the incoming chemicals, the ones you receive from a supplier, the new label on those incoming containers will have one product identifier. This gives you the name of the chemical product. You need to be able to use this product identifier to find the product's safety data sheet or SDS. Two, pictograms. There are nine pictograms total, but one is for environmental issues, so you need to be able to know eight of those pictograms. By looking at the symbol or pictogram, what kind of hazard this chemical presents to you. Three, harmonize signal word. You will either see the word danger or warning here. Danger is used to warn you about more severe hazards. Warning is for less severe hazards. Four, hazard statement for each hazard class and category. There are certain phrases a chemical manufacturer will use here to warn you. For instance, may be harmful if swallowed or fatal if inhaled. Five, precautionary statement. This gives you information regarding what to do if you get this on your skin or in your eyes or if it catches fire, what to do if something bad happens. Six, supplier information. This shows you the name and contact information for the supplier of the product. For your workplace labels, what they call secondary containers, the ones you fill and use yourself to spray, apply, etc. Those also require labels. You have some flexibility here, but they have to at least show the product identifier in some words, pictures, or symbols that communicate to you information about the hazards of that chemical. I mentioned pictograms. What are they? They're pictures or symbols that warn you without words. So you can see the picture and know about the hazard. Let's look at the pictograms. This is a major health hazard pictogram. The way I remember what it stands for is it looks like a starburst in your chest. That would be a big problem inside your body, the starburst. So think about chemicals that can cause cancer, change your DNA, cause birth defects, poison you, or cause you to have trouble breathing. You get the idea. Major health hazards indicated by this starburst. This one should be easy. It's a flame. It represents flammable materials. When you see this, think ouch. It warns you that this chemical can cause skin rashes and other problems with your skin or cause your eyes to burn and itch. Look closely. See, it shows test tubes pouring out chemicals that are causing a burning reaction. This pictogram represents corrosive materials like acids or caustics, things that can corrode or burn right now. Can you guess what this one is? It's an exploding bomb. It warns you that this chemical is explosive. This one has a flame, but look closer. See the circle in there? This pictogram is for oxidizers. Oxidizers are agents that can start a fire in other materials or help a fire burn more aggressively. Oxidizers act either by causing the fire itself or by releasing oxygen or other gases which make a fire more likely. Besides oxygen itself, chlorine and nitric acid are oxidizers. This pictogram represents gases under pressure. In industry or construction, it could be welding gases. In healthcare, oxygen bottles. No, this is not representing a pirate ship. It warns you that this chemical is toxic or fatal. If you get too much of it in your body by breathing it, ingesting it, or something having it go through your skin into your body. Let's review those pictograms. The pictogram will appear on the screen. You say what it represents, okay?
Okay, pictograms, we got that. Now, let's look at the new 16 section format of the safety data sheets. Section one, identification. This section tells you the name of the chemical and how you're supposed to use it, and contact information for the manufacturer or supplier. The name of the chemical on your label should match up with the name of the chemical on the safety data sheet. Section two, hazard identification. Here you will find out about the hazards of the chemical. You will find the signal word. Remember, it will either be danger, which means more serious, or warning, which means less serious. You will also find the hazard statement, pictograms, precautionary statement, and other information related to the hazards related to this chemical. The precautionary statement, hazard statements, pictograms, and signal word should all match with the information on the label of the chemical container you received from your supplier. Section 3, Composition Information on Ingredients. Section 3 lists the ingredients in the product. You might be surprised at what chemicals are in the product you're using. Here you will find information about the substances and mixtures in the product. Please note this, Section 8 of the SDS is related to this section because in Section 8 you will find out about the exposure limits of the various ingredients. Section 4, First Aid Measures. Next you will see information you will need if someone is hurt by the chemical. There will be first aid instructions for each of the routes of exposure, where the chemical can enter your body, such as through inhalation or breathing in, if it gets on the skin, in the eyes, and so forth. You will also see descriptions of the most important symptoms or effects, those that can happen right away and those that might take a while to appear. First aid providers can now always find first aid procedures in Section 4 on every SDS. Section 5, Firefighting Measures. Here, you will see recommendations for fighting a fire caused by this chemical. The SDS will show recommendations for the types of extinguishing equipment to use, as well as hazards that may develop as a result of this chemical catching fire. Don't be a hero, though. If you're not trained to fight fires, then notify and evacuate. Section 6, Accidental Release Measures. If someone spills this chemical or there is a release, this section will help you know appropriate responses including containment and cleanup to minimize exposure to people, property, and the environment. Spill cleanup responders can always look to Section 6 on any SDS for information they need for safe cleanup of a spilled or leaking chemical. Section 7, Handling and Storage. Section 7 talks about how to safely handle and store this chemical. It will also mention if there's things that should not be stored with or by this chemical because they could react badly. Section 8, Exposure Controls, Personal Protection. Remember Section 3? It showed the ingredients. Section 8 will always contain information about exposure limits, engineering controls, and ways to protect yourself, including personal protective equipment or PPE. Exposure limits are how much of a chemical you can be exposed to and for how long with no damage to you. The exposure limits will be shown as OSHA's PELs. PEL stands for Permissible Exposure Limit. This is typically expressed as a Time Weighted Average, or TWA, and is a concentration level or limit that is not to be exceeded. Please note, the lower the PEL, the less of that chemical ingredient it takes to hurt you. If you see the word skin in brackets, that means that chemical has a skin designation and can be absorbed through your skin. Be sure to take extra steps to keep those chemicals off your skin. Usually protective gloves and clothing are necessary. TLV stands for Threshold Limit Value. These limits are established by the American Conference of Governmental Industrial Hygienists, or ACGIH. These limits are typically lower than OSHA PELs. STEL stands for short-term exposure limit. This shows the level or limit that cannot be exceeded over a 15-minute period. Section 8 also gives you information regarding PPE you should wear when using this chemical, including respiratory protection to protect your lungs and gloves to protect your hands. Section 9, Physical and Chemical Properties. This section identifies physical and chemical properties associated with the substance or mixture. What does the chemical look like and smell like and other details about the chemical? Section 10, Stability and Reactivity. This section describes the reactivity hazards of the chemical and the chemical stability information.
Section 10 lists all conditions that should be avoided, meaning if you don't want something bad to happen. Section 11, toxicological information. Here you will find information about how the chemical could enter your body and what the results will be if it did. In other words, if it gets on you or in you, what could happen to you? Section 12, ecological information. This section provides information to evaluate the environmental impact of the chemical if it were released to the environment. Section 13, disposal considerations. This section provides guidance on proper disposal practices, recycling or reclamation of the chemical or its container, and safe handling practices. Section 14, transport information. This section provides guidance on classification information for shipping and transporting of hazardous chemicals by road, air, rail, or sea. Section 15, regulatory information. This section identifies the safety, health, and environmental regulations specific for the product that is not indicated anywhere else on the SDS. Section 16, other information. This section indicates when the SDS was prepared or when the last known revision was made. The SDS may also state where the changes have been made to the previous version. Remember, the types of information on an SDS will always be in the same section on every SDS after June 1, 2015. We have covered a lot of material today. Of course, we did not cover specifics of your workplace. You need to find out if you do not know the answers to these questions. Remember when we talked about these at the beginning of this training? Let's see if we can answer them better now. What is this training about? It's about hazardous chemicals. What hazardous chemicals are you exposed to? A denatured alcohol and hot lacquers and things of that nature. Where are the chemicals present? Uh, we keep them in the treatment areas in the manufacturer's bottles. What are the short and long-term health effects? Some of those can make you really sick and cause cancer and skin irritation. How can you detect if you're overexposed? The air can be tested to determine the concentrations in the air. How can you protect yourself? We wear rubber gloves and then wash afterwards. Where are the SDS and written program located? It is at the Right to Know station. What information must be on the label on containers of hazardous chemicals? There'll be a product identifier, there'll be a hazard statement, a precautionary statement, a signal word, a pictogram or pictograms, and contact information for the supplier or manufacturer of the chemical. What do these pictograms mean? the right to know about the chemicals you work with, but does it matter to you? Do you want to end up here? Or here? It's up to you. <laughs>